Welcome back to the channel, guys. It is me, AD Summer for Four. So today, guys, we're previewing guys the Champions League quarterfinals, guys, quarterfinals. And there's only one game to start, only one place to start, guys, and it has to be this game: Manchester City versus Bayern Munich. For me, this is my favorite matchup of the round. I'm really excited for this one, and this is probably the toughest one to call. You could make an argument for. And the thing about this one that is so interesting is that Nagelsmann got sacked. And now Tuchel is here. And this is probably Man City's worst nightmare. Because we all know Tuchel defeated uh, Pep Guardiola in the Champions League final 2021. And obviously Pep Guardiola wants to get revenge. You know, I think he's thinking about that defeat too long in his d d head. And he thinks to himself, we should have won that game. He should have won that game. And you could see how this one is really interesting because there's so much narratives on this one. Joao Cancelo playing against his former club, well, you know, technically on loan. Then you have Leroy Sané, you know, a former uh, Manchester City player, wanting to make a point, you know. And it's just really interesting to see the battles between Musiala, Phil Foden. Then you have the striker of Holland, and then you have Mane as well. You know, the Triple Moting as well. Like it's just such a crazy. Uh, game and I really love this one. It's so difficult to call and I think the thing that makes this so interesting is the fact that Bayern Munich have made that decision to sack Nagelsmann ahead of this kind of game for this and on my personal belief I feel so though they sacked Nagelsmann more so for the Champions League because they thought they think that they couldn't win the Champions League with Nagelsmann you know and maybe it was also down to the league as well but who knows and I think, for me, the thing that makes it really interesting is see how Bayern does the Champions League. Because now, Bayern have to win either the Champions League or the league this season. Because if they don't, it's going to look really bad on Nagelsmann. You know, I would argue that they should be... they, they should Now they're in a great position when the Champions League. Now it's almost too cool. So it's a really interesting game, guys. Really, really interesting here. For me, as for a prediction, I've thought this hard and hard, and I've made a decision. I am going to go with Bayern Munich to advance. I just feel as though... That Bayern Munich have just been this great this season. My issue with Manchester City, as good as they have been, I feel like this Manchester City team just doesn't really feel like the same Manchester City teams of previous seasons. And I feel like a lot of other players need to step up. You know, obviously, I know a lot of people are going to talk about Holland and KDB, rightfully so. But what about the other players, like Bernardo Silva? Is he going to step up in this kind of game? Is Phil Foden going to step up? You know, is like is Gundogan going to step up? You know, obviously... He has a Dortmund pass, so he has, he has a statement to make here, obviously, against one of his rivals, of course. You know, and I just think that's really interesting to see how, you know, and everything unfolds. And I think Thomas Tuchel will get the better up. Pep Guardiola once again, and I do think Bayern Munich will knock Manchester City out. This will be close, though. I could see this one go to penalties, maybe even potentially extra time. But I do think Bayern Munich will just slightly edge this one because of their defense. I think their defense has just been too good this season. And I think they're... Um, their attack will just get the goals that are necessary. Whereas I feel like City, for me, defensively, they look a bit shaky. It's shaky, to say the least. All right, next up it is, and the other side, um, and the same side of the bracket we have, is Real Madrid-Chelsea. Ah, man, for the third season in a row, man, we're having this yet again. Jeez. Oh, man, wow. Wow, 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 wow. Real Madrid, Chelsea versus Real Madrid. I, <sighs> Chelsea, man. If you're a Chelsea fan, this might be the worst possible draw you guys guys could have got in the Champions League because Real Madrid are going all in for the Champions League. After what happened in La Liga and El Clasico, Real Madrid is like, okay, we're done with La Liga. We're going to go all in for the Champions League. And this is very interesting because I look at Chelsea this season, they have been very, very, very disappointing this season. They haven't been good this season, man. Chelsea are sitting mid-table in the Premier League. They're struggling for form right now. And while defensively they have improved, their attack is the big issue with this Chelsea team. They just haven't been able to score enough goals. Whereas Madrid, on the other hand, defensively they're not looking the best, but their attack has been great. So it's kind of like two polar opposites, you can say. One can't defend, but one can keep, uh, one can score, right? And I think for Chelsea in particular, what's really concerning for me is the fact that a lot of players are actually one yellow card away from suspension. I believe Koulibaly, then obviously Thiago Silva, then Reese James, etc., and I do think for Chelsea, though, there is one big positive that N'Golo Kante is back, who is a huge positive. Because remember, guys, a few seasons ago, Kante actually had a masterclass against Real Madrid. He was fantastic in both games. And I think for me, he needs to be at his 100% pivotal best for Chelsea to have a chance. Because without Kante, Chelsea don't have a chance. I'm saying this right now, guys. I know they may seem very harsh, and some people may be very mad at me when I'm saying, but I feel like Kante is just too important to this team. 
Because with Conte, I think Chelsea could actually do it. But without Conte, who knows? And we know Conte is a very injury-prone player anyway. And so it's going to be very interesting to see how that unfolds. And I think for Chelsea to win this one, they have to get at least a draw at the Bernabeu. Because the first leg is going to be at the Bernabeu, and the second leg is going to be at Stamford Bridge. So that could be very interesting. My prediction for this one, guys, I just think Real Madrid is just, just I, I think they're going to do it. Um, I don't think this will be a blowout by any means. I don't think this will be a destruction. I know some people may believe it is. I think Real Madrid is going to get the class done. I think they're going to win the first leg, and they'll probably get a draw or even win the second leg at, at away. Or maybe just lose the second leg, but have enough, you know, just have a good enough margin to afford a loss. So I'm going to go with Real Madrid to advance. Um, we'll see, though, what happens. And so, yeah, according to me, man, we would have a Bayern Munich versus Real Madrid as a semifinal, which would be pretty, pretty spicy, to say the least. And now we move on to Inter Milan versus Benfica. Oh, this is a big one. Quite possibly the most, most... The most cagiest affair. I would say this is probably the most cagiest affair and probably the least goal scoring wise. I don't think there'll be a lot of goals in this tie. Hardly any goals. And we saw Inter were able were able to defeat Porto, but Porto gave a good account of themselves. Porto played really, really well, especially in the second leg. And Porto should have won that game. But Inter man defensively were solid as heck. The thing is with this Inter Milan team is that defensively solid. Their attack is what really concerns me though. Kind of similar to Chelsea and that their attack is what's really concerning for me because Lukaku, uh, uh, I'm sorry, who's the guy? Lautaro Martinez was a no-show. He was a no-show against Porto. And I think for Benfica, they're going to look, look and say, yeah, this is a great opportunity. And I think if you're a Benfica fan, you're probably like, this is a good draw for us. And I think if you're Inter, you're also happy with the draw. I think both respective clubs are happy with this draw that they got. I think this is probably the best for both teams here because of how evenly matched the two teams are. Now, I think for Inter in particular, man, how are they going to set up defensively? You know, that's going to be my concern with Inter. And, of course, Benfica, man, we we know how good they have been this season. My concern for Benfica, though, is that the second leg is away at San Siro. And that's what my, makes me concerned is that Benfica could probably win the first leg. But it puts massive pressure on the first leg now that Benfica basically have to win that. And if that, they lose that, it's really going to be difficult for them to get a result in Italy, of course. For Inter, man, it's going to be very inter interesting to see how this one pans out. As for a prediction, guys, it's a very, very difficult one to call. But I am going to go with Inter, actually, to advance. I feel like, for me, Inter Milan, they're just going to go all in for the Champions League. I think they're going to be a, they're going to do it somehow. And I feel like for Benfica, they're going to, it's going to be kind of like what Porto did. I feel like Benfica will miss too many chances, and they will regret those missed chances. And I feel like Benfica will just... They'll just let the occasion get the better of them. I just feel like Benfica will succumb to the pressure, and I feel like Inter will just capitalize... Um, on the counterattacks in particular. So I, it, it's going to be very similar to see uh, what happened against Porto, basically. Except I do think Benfica is better. So this one, I think, could go to penalties, could even go to extra time. But I'm going to get the inch of the slight edge to advance. Probably like a 1-0 or 2-1 on aggregate. It's going to be very close, guys. Very, very close on aggregate. And now the final matchup. The final matchup. We have here it is Milan versus Napoli. Oh, Milan, man. This is such a cruel draw. This might be the worst draw Milan could have got. And it's really interesting because Milan have the, this season have been really struggling. They haven't been great this season by their own standards. And they just are struggling, man. You know, I feel like um they haven't been great this season. That being said, though, Mike Magnon is back. And I think that's a huge, huge positive for Milan. And you can see how much presence he brings to this team defensively speaking. Because... In Milan is so much better defensively with him rather than without him, of course. You know, you have Tato Rossano, you know. For Napoli this season, they've been amazing. They've been amazing. You know, Kavic Scarle uh, has been amazing. Awesome has been a firing as well. Labotka as well. And this Napoli team just looks so good. Um, I do have one concern, though, with Napoli is that how are they going to approach this one being the first leg is going to be away at the San Siro, um, being away and the San Siro in the second leg being in Naples, I believe. So, for this one, guys, I have Napoli to advance. I just think for Milan, it's going to be too much to ask for this team. But then again, they do have the football heritage. That could mean a lot in this kind of encounter. And they did; they have got a good record over against Napoli in the Serie A in re recent seasons. But I do think this is a really different Napoli team. I think that Napoli team we're seeing now is way different to the Napoli teams we've seen in the past. So I'm going to go at Napoli to advance. And so, yeah, so let me recap my semifinal. So, I'm going to have a Real Madrid versus Bayern Munich as my semifinal and Inter Milan versus Napoli as my other semifinal. So, 
I want you guys to comment down below your predictions for these four games. And yeah, comment down below your thoughts if you um, made it this far. Also, like this video if you did enjoy. Comment down below your thoughts and subscribe if you're new. Also, check out my other platforms in the description below. And yeah, I'll see you guys later, man. Peace out.